If you felt great in your body, how would that change your life? How would it change your body? And how would it change your level of happiness? Women deserve to feel great in the skin they're in and to live a life they truly love. Now is the time to join the host of, for the health of it, Master Health Coach, Julie Medesi. Welcome to For the Health of It. I'm your host, Julie Medesi. And for those of you who don't know me very well yet, I am a master health coach, a certified holistic health practitioner, a certified personal trainer, and a few other things. So needless to say, this is a place where you are welcome to listen and learn and discuss all things health related for the health of it. And we're here on the Inspired Choices Network. I would love to hear from you. If you are listening to the show and you would like to get in touch, please feel free to email me. Um, get in touch with me on any of the social media apps or go check out buildabodyyoulove.com where you'll find some information about a great program. Today, we are going to dive into the topic that is probably nearest and dearest to my heart and foundational to all the other things that you've heard me talk about so far, and that is self-care. And today we're calling the episode Self-Care, The Me in Menopause, because last time we met, we talked about your beautiful aging body. Perimenopause and menopause are important transitional years in women's lives. And if your schedule is full to bursting, which means you somehow keep forgetting to pencil in time for yourself, then welcome to the Too Busy For Me Club, which is a bustling society of super women over 40 who unknowingly sideline themselves thinking they're doing the right thing by putting everyone else first. Unfortunately, as a VIP member, you're actually setting yourself up for a serious self-care deficit. And let's face it, in the roller coaster of perimenopause and menopause, a self-care deficit is the last thing you need. So navigating your maze of personal commitments, work demands, family obligations, and our own unrealistic expectations, we end up feeling overwhelmed and exhausted. So it's time to learn how to weave self-care into your busy life and turn it from a nice idea into practical everyday actions you can start taking right now. I want to challenge that misplaced guilt that so many of you feel when prioritizing yourself and empower you to see self-care as your number one responsibility. So whether you're a self-care newbie or a seasoned wellness warrior, this episode is going to offer you some new insights and actionable tips to ensure that self-care is no longer relegated to the sidelines. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you will be ready to take those vital steps toward embracing self-care as an integral part of your life and set the example for all the women around you to do the same. So let's get this show on the road. First, we're going to talk about a few different facets of self-care. And in my mind, one of the biggest fundamental pieces to self-care is your sense of self-worth. We've talked about this before but it's so, so important. We only take care of things we love. And if you don't feel worthy of the time and effort you're already giving everyone and everything else, then that's really where we need to start. So what is your sense of self-worth? Are you embracing self-acceptance? If you feel yourself saying these not so nice things inside of your own mind, if that internal bully is talking to you more often than not, then this is a really important place to start because when you can get to that point of self-acceptance and your self-worth starts to raise, self-care is going to become something that's a whole lot easier for you to embrace. And I you know, let's let's consider this a virtual wellness retreat where you're a guest of honor because I want to walk you through this process. And trust me, I come from a place where um, my my mother taught me as a young woman to always make sure to put the other person first, to always make sure they feel good. If there was an embarrassing situation, if there was pain to be felt, if there was any kind of discomfort or shame. I was to take that on for the other person so that they could always feel uplifted and good about themselves. And while well-meaning, it was really a convoluted way of raising a woman to think that 
she didn't deserve to put that same energy into her own life. And my mother was an amazing woman. Don't get me wrong. Everyone loved her, but I, we lost her when she was young. She was only 48. I was 19. And I often wonder, was she truly happy? I know she found happy is in making other people happy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Our mission on this earth is to lift others up. And my mission is to help women embrace self-care, empower them to become the best version of themselves. And so there's nothing wrong with having that as that underlying intent, but the way we express it can really change the way we feel about ourselves and the way we treat ourselves. And, you know, for me, I ended up on this journey of fighting with that sense of self-worth because I, I always put everyone else first and I, it drove me into toxic and destructive relationships. And it drove me into always feeling a bit less than, and I found myself always seeking external validation by putting more energy and effort into other people. And, you know, when, when you do that, it can lead you into some really dodgy places mentally and emotionally. And think about how we're teaching these things to the young women coming up in this transitional era of our lives. We really need to make sure that we're not only leading by example, but that we're developing the life we really truly want to live because menopause is a transition. Perimenopause is a transition. If you have functioning ovaries and you're 50% of the world's population and you do, you will experience all of this roller coaster ride of menopause. And so we still have a whole lot of life left even after we've entered into this part of life. So if you want to live a life you love, taking that time to learn how to accept yourself, how to feel that sense of self-worth so that you can embrace self-care is going to be a really critical piece. And if you're part of this generation, certainly back where I grew up, we just didn't talk about these things. Personal development wasn't a thing. Coaching wasn't a thing. We never talked about mental and emotional health. It was just, you know, put on your big girl pants and get over it. But self-care really underlies so many different aspects of our lives. And I, you might say, oh, this is great about your life. What does that all have to do with self-care? But, you know, we're all navigating life in our own way. And we have to have these experiences in order to decide that we're ready to do something different. And something different could be getting coaching. It could be working with a therapist. It could be engaging in hobbies and things that bring you joy. It could be having some crucial conversations with people that, you don't feel are are helping support your life or maybe who aren't really supporting the things that you want to do where we have those those energy vampires around us all the time and surrounding yourself with people who help lift you up is a good way to get started in that and then you'll start to feel like someone worthy of taking care of um you know i i learned one of the things that I hear from so many women is that self-care is so selfish. How can you say to put myself first? But we have to put ourselves first. You know, the airlines always say, put your own oxygen mask on first before helping other people. We have to do that in order to have something to give. And when we let ourselves not take care of ourselves and we put ourselves last, we end up feeling depleted. We end up feeling overwhelmed. We end up feeling, I don't know, just completely fatigued with all of the different demands. And what I see happen and what has happened with myself is we end up taking on more and more commitments, thinking that's going to make us feel better. We end up never saying no to things that may not feel quite in alignment with, with who we are, who we want to be, or the life we want to live, because we feel like those are things that we're supposed to do. Women are nurturers, right? We're the care... And I, I'm not blanketing. I know that a lot of men are caregivers, but generally speaking in our society, women are still majority caregivers. And so we're sandwiched between taking care of children and grandchildren and aging parents. And sometimes we get lost in there. And when we go through menopause, we 
our bodies are going through changes, our minds are going through changes, and we have to take a step back and actually learn who we are again, because it's easy to lose sense of that when you're so busy taking care of everyone and everything else. And that's why I talk about these journeys and this sense of self-worth and this sense of self-acceptance, because we, it's so easy to lose yourself and we've all done it in relationships, right? We get so devoted, whether it's work or interpersonal relationship, friendships or romantic relationships, it's easy to dive in and become such a part of the relationship that you forget who you are or who you were before the relationship started. And um, I think it brings up a lot of internal conflict. So, you know, at the risk of rambling a little bit, um, I, I just want to make sure that you understand when I'm talking about self-care, I'm talking about self-care from within. And, you know, manicures and facials and massages are fab fantastic. I was going to say fab fabtastic, fabulous, fantastic things to do for yourself. And, and I think they're amazing, but that isn't the kind of self-care I'm talking about. I'm talking about the self-care that starts in within every fiber of your being, within that person who wants to live in alignment with their values and their purpose in life and taking care of that person so that you can live that mission, you can live that vision, you can live those values. And when you get in touch with who that person is internally, you have so much more to share to the rest of the world with the rest of the world and so much more to give. So when we go into this phase of, of our lives, I think it's a beautiful time to step back and reflect and regroup and think about what that's going to look like for us. And then you can define once you get to that point of self-care and self or self-acceptance and self-worth, and you go up that hierarchy towards self-love, then you get to decide what self-care really means to you and what it's going to actually look like. So we have three different, I call it the self-care triad. We have three different aspects that I'm going to focus on today when we come back from the break. And those are your physical um, self-care, psychological self-care, and social self-care. Because really self-care affects a number of different parts of your life. So it could be physical, emotional, mental, career, relationships, recreation, fun, finances, many different aspects of your life. There are pieces of self-care that you can put into action to help you grow in those areas, to help you feel satisfied and secure in those other areas of your life. As I've said, I'm a holistic health practitioner. I'm a health coach, which means we look at the whole person. I may not be giving you career or financial advice, but the things we do related to your health and well-being involve all of those areas of your life. And so when we make a change in one area, it's going to have a snowball or ripple effect into the other areas of your life as well. That's why self-care matters so much. That's why we start with self-acceptance and self-worth. And when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about why it especially matters in menopause and beyond. So we've talked about defining self-care. We've talked a little bit about self-acceptance and self-worth and the journey that we're all on. I'm really excited to dive into the next segment and talk about why self-care matters to you. So stay tuned and we will be back after the break. If you felt great in your body, how would that change your life? How would it change your body? And how would it change your level of happiness? Women deserve to feel great in the skin they're in and to live a life they truly love. Now is the time to join the host of For the Health of It, Master Health Coach, Julie Medesi. Do you know that health and vitality are your body's natural state of being? Is that what your life feels like? Or do you feel like that's more of a pipe dream than an achievable goal? If you're a woman over 40 experiencing those not so fun changes to your body or lacking energy and worrying about the side effects of aging, wishing you could fit back into your clothes, it is time for you to learn how to change it all. When you tune into For the Health of It with Master Health Coach Julie Medesi, 
you'll learn how to regain your sense of badassery so you can navigate midlife like a boss. Listen to For the Health of It with Julie Medesi, Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 Central Time, 8 Mountain Time, and 7 Pacific Time, and 4 p.m. in Italy on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is For the Health of It with Julie Medesi. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Julie at EvexiaHealth.com. That's J-U-L-I at E-V-E-X-I-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com. And now back to the program. Welcome back to For the Health of It. I'm your host, Julie Medesi. We're here on the Inspired Choices Network. And I love this episode because there's it's such a topic that's near and dear to my heart. I know I say that regularly, but these things are all so interconnected. And if you've listened to any of my other episodes, thank you, by the way. Um, I, I love to talk about how these things all weave together. And we really, when you look at your health, you think you have trillions of cells in your body. And I don't remember what the latest number is. It's hard of how many trillion. It changes from time to time. But we have trillions of cells in our body and they take time to change and they communicate with each other. And our nervous system communicates with our cells and our hormones communicate with our nervous system and our cells. And all of this is happening all of the time. And so we look at all of these different aspects of our health and they do really have an impact on each other. And when I work in my programs with my clients, we work a lot on the different facets of, of health because one change can make a big impact on the other areas of your health. And a lot of times when we're going through perimenopause or menopause, we may not even realize the changes that are happening. And I've had conversations with a number of different women who say, oh, I've just had all of these weird um, symptoms or my moods are getting really crazy or my cycles are just so strange. And, and those are all signs and symptoms that you could be entering perimenopause. I mean, menopause technically is one day, right? It's the one, once you've gone 12 months without a period, you are officially menopausal and everything beyond that is postmenopause. But that doesn't mean that things just flip a switch for our bodies. This whole transitional phase of our lives can last years and years and years going through perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause is everything after menopause until you die, basically. And all of that time, your body is changing. And when we don't have good, solid uh, self-care practices, a lot of these different symptoms and effects of what's happening in our bodies can feel like they've been magnified. The other thing is a lot of these symptoms are, are vague or similar to other things that could be going on with your health. And the medical system doesn't really have good tools, not only to, to diagnose menopausal and perimenopausal um, fluctuations, but to, to treat it. And when I say treat it, I don't even mean treat it because we, it's not a disease or an affliction of any kind. It's, it's a transitional phase of our life, just like when we went through puberty. It's the, the opposite end of puberty, right? So we are changing our bodies, need different things at different times. So self-care practices are essential for navigating this and, and reducing, if possible, the, the severity of the symptoms that you might experience. And the other frustrating piece of this, of course, is because every woman experiences menopause differently. I've compared stories with other women I know who've been through it or are going through it. And the myriad of symptoms that you might experience are tremendous. When you can focus in on your needs and be willing to, to reflect on, that's interesting, what's happening to me now? What, how can I best support myself that's when you're going to be able to really fill your toolbox with a lot of different self-care tools because it may change from day to day. It may change from week to week, month to month, year to year. You just don't know. And having more tools in your toolbox gives you the ability to really face it um, 
I think with a better attitude to face it, feeling more in control of certain things that you can actually control because some of these things, let's face it, we just can't control. And instead of feeling like a stranger in our body, how would it feel if you knew how to take care of yourself and listen to your body and listen to your body's needs because it will tell you what it wants. And then we can put these self-care tools into place and realize that, okay, these things are happening. It's time for me to have a little closer look and how am I going to support myself today? So hormones change. And I mean, really change the way we store fat on our bodies is going to change. <clears throat> and we are going to have more fat our, around our midsection. They call it menopause belly. Don't worry about having six pack abs. Think about how your body needs that fat. It's intentionally storing it there because that tissue will produce estrogen that your body needs once your ovaries aren't producing it anymore. So instead of focusing on so many physical um, changes that you want to make, focus focusing inward on getting healthier and learning how to care for your body from the inside out is what's going to really make a difference. And and it will make you feel better. One of the other, it, one of the other things to remember is self-care. Let's talk about the physical aspects. Um, physical aspects could be the way you eat, the way you move your body, the way you sleep, the way you manage um, your sleep cycles and recovery cycles, instead of going and doubling down on dieting or exercise, think about what your body needs at this point in life, because it's going to be different than it used to be. These hyper-processed foods, oh my goodness, I was reading about today that First of all, you've heard me say before, I mean, I, I'm always ranting about the diet industry and the diet industry is trying to sell you this bill of goods with hyper-processed foods, ultra-processed foods that are artificially designed in a laboratory to make you crave more of them. And that also goes for processed diet foods that you buy in a package, by the way. And they have a huge impact on your health. They have a huge impact on your hormone levels that are already in flux. And this is not the time to be throwing those things into your body. Um, these foods are manufactured, manufactured for long shelf life. They're manufactured to be the lowest cost, cheapest ingredients they can find so that they can maximize the profit margin when you buy them. And they're selling them because labeling laws are so loose. They're selling them to you like, this is going to be the thing. And even well-meaning companies that sell menopausal supplements and special foods that are to you know, balance your hormones at this phase of life, they're not going to be able to do that. There's no panacea. There's no one thing that's going to fix any of it. So we have to learn to flow with it. And the best thing you can do from a nutritional standpoint of self-care is to eat a healthy diet, which may look different for you than someone else you know. So again, paying attention to how food makes you feel and making sure that you have plenty of whole healthy foods that you like um, that's going to make a big difference in the symptoms that you experience. It's going to be one of your best self-care tools because your body is going to build your cells from the things you put into it. And things, unfortunately, like caffeine and sugar and alcohol are all going to spike those symptoms in a big way. So learning to listen to your body when it says, I'm having massive hot flashes, what can I do to take care of myself so that they aren't quite as intense? Start looking at what you're eating. Movement, another great form of self-care. And I do mean self-care. Exercise should never be a punishment. And I'm still amazed and shocked at how many women use it that way. And um, yeah, Cherie said she first started going through menopause. She started gaining weight quickly. And um you know, putting on gym clothes and going to the gym and it, and it compounds because then we let that inner bully go, right? We let that inner bully go at us and we start berating ourselves because now we have fat bulges and fat in places we didn't have it before and we don't like it. Instead of saying, hmm, that's interesting. 
what might be causing this or why is this happening, especially if you're already following what you consider to be healthy habits. If you're following healthy habits and your body isn't changing the way you want to, it could be that those habits aren't healthy for you. So again, watching what you're taking into your body, staying away from ultra-processed and hyper-processed foods, minimizing things like caffeine and sugar and alcohol to see if they have an effect, to see if they impact the way you experience those symptoms. That's some of the best self-care you can give your body. Rest and recovery. Rest and recovery are especially essential. Instead of doubling down on the cardio machines, focus on some strength training. If you want to care for your body and take care of yourself, one of the best places you can get energy is by doing strength training. We lose muscle mass because of our hormonal changes. And um, in the body, we lose muscle mass as we age. And if we don't do something to preserve it, it can affect our bone density. And if we don't do something about that, it can affect our mobility. And it's also movement is a fabulous way to keep your stress levels down. And if you want to take care of yourself, the and I am pretty sure, to, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'd be willing to bet that when you feel stressed, the last thing you feel like doing is cooking a healthy meal for yourself or taking time to relax and read a book or going to the gym or doing some kind of exercise. The typical thing that we do is we reach for whatever's comforting to us because that's what our brains have been taught we want to do. And so changing some of those habits. And when I was going through popcorn and wine, yeah, me too. Those are my go-tos as well. And when I find myself craving popcorn or saying, oh, I really want a glass of wine right now, I've learned to take a step back and ask myself, what do I really need? What am I really feeling right now? And a lot of times the answer is, I need some fresh air. I need to take a break. Oh, I'm feeling stressed because this situation is happening. Then I can take it, once I've taken that step back and become more aware of what's actually going on, I can decide how I'm going to take care of myself. Most of the time, it's not by eating the popcorn or drinking the wine. Once in a while it is, but generally speaking, I can find a better way to do that. And I always feel better for it. And I'm always glad I did. So these are habits that we build together. So when we look at, you know, why self-care matters, when you start taking care of yourself, especially where it comes to nutrition, movement, sleep, stress recovery, um, these are all really, really essential pieces of experiencing not only the menopause transition more smoothly, but life generally. It will affect your mood. It will affect your ability to look at yourself and say, I got this, right? And we all want to have that sense of confidence and of ownership and of the ability to look after ourselves the same way that we do for other people. And if it was selfish to look after ourselves, why don't we look at other people we take care of as selfish for needing our support? I think that's an important question to answer. If, if we thought they were selfish, we probably wouldn't be as quick to help them. So why is it that you don't feel like you deserve the same amount of time and energy to feel at your best? Why is it that you find it difficult to ask other people for support and help? We're going to talk a little bit about that when we come back. I have a couple of client stories I would love to share with you about that very thing. Because again, self-care is going to look different for everyone because you need to decide what works for you. What do you need? Because your needs are different from my needs are different from Christine and Cherie's needs who are here with me in the chat room. And we have to be able to step back, have a clear look at that and come to terms with what that looks like for us. So when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about a couple of stories to put this really into perspective for you. And then we'll look at how we can balance self-care with all of your life's competing priorities. So we're here on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm your host, Julie Medesi, here for the health of it. And I can't wait to talk to you again after the break. Do you know that health and vitality are your body's natural state of being? Is that what your life feels like? Or do you feel like that's more of a pipe dream than an achievable goal? 
If you're a woman over 40 experiencing those not-so-fun changes to your body, or lacking energy and worrying about the side effects of aging, wishing you could fit back into your clothes, it is time for you to learn how to change it all. When you tune into For the Health of It with Master Health Coach Julie Medesi, you'll learn how to regain your sense of badassery so you can navigate midlife like a boss. Listen to For the Health of It with Julie Medesi Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 Central Time, 8 Mountain Time, and 7 Pacific Time, and 4 p.m. in Italy on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is For the Health of It with Julie Medesi. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to julie at evexiahealth.com. That's J U L I at E V E X I A H E A L T H dot com. And now back to the program. Welcome back to For the Health of It. I'm your host, Julie Medesi, here on the Inspired Choices Network. And I am super excited about this show. If you are struggling with finding ways to fit self care into your life and would like some support with that, please do reach out to me. You can email me at j u l i at e v e x i a h e a l t h dot com. That's Julie at avexiahealth dot com. Find me on social media. Um, or have a look at the website, buildabodyyoulove.com. I would love to support you through this phase of your life, through this transition, through figuring out what self-care means to you, because you are your number one priority. And if you're not yet, that's something that needs to happen because the world needs the best part of you. And the only way you can give it that is by taking care of yourself and putting your needs first. As the airlines say, put your own oxygen mask on first. It's a hard lesson for us to learn. And a lot of times we don't learn it until something serious happens. And I don't want that for you. We have enough competing demands on our time. We have enough things to think about and focus on. And if you're balancing family and kids or grandkids and aging parents and a job and a household and other hobbies and interests and who knows what else might be on your plate, self-care is going to need to be a really integral piece of that so that you can continue doing the things that you do enjoy. And I, one of the things that I really loved in our last episode, we talked about your beautiful aging body. And my, my guest host had said, you know, after 50, your, your, I, um, what is it? Your give a damn meter gets turned off. And I, and I think that's really true. This is an amazing time of life when we want to embrace our ability to say no to things that don't really bring us joy or, or lift us up. It's time to start practicing how to be the person we want to become, how to live the life we want to live once we, retire or the kids move away or whatever that transition might be for you. Um, unless you're lucky enough to do something like I do, where you love what you do and don't really plan to retire at some point, scaling back is still going to be a thing. And who will you be then? When I moved to Italy nine and a half years ago, I found it real. I, I guess I went through, if you want to say a midlife crisis, I was just turning 50. I came off of a 25 year career in corporate HR. And I didn't think I, I didn't think I really put that much um, of my identity in, in my career and who I was professionally. But when I got to Italy and I didn't have that anymore, and I had to decide what I wanted to be when I grew up, all of a sudden I had this, this sort of crisis of who am I? And one of the certification programs, um, I love it, 
Cherie says, at 60, I finally don't give up about what people think of me. That's such an amazing milestone to reach. But yeah, I, I didn't know who I was. And in one of my certifications, we had to write down this identity statement, who, I, who am I? I am. And my identity changes from day to day, to be honest, uh, depending on which hat I'm wearing. And I like that. The nice thing is that you get to decide who that person is. Look inside, choose your values, choose the way you want to live your life, and then start taking care of that person as if they exist today, because the truth is they do. They're right there inside of you the whole time. We want to bring them out. We want to uncover them and let them shine. And the best way to do that is by learning how to really, really take care of yourself and make self-care your number one priority. So I said I was going to tell you a couple of stories. A, a couple of years ago, I went uh, took a trip back to the U.S. My dad is um, in late stages of Alzheimer's, and he created some really a, a really terrible mess that our family is still working through. And I held power of attorney, so I I had to go back and and start trying to help sort things out. And he needed round the clock care, pretty much couldn't be left on his own. And I he was staying with my brother, and my brother needed a break, and I went back to take over. And between doctor's appointments and just being with him um, and trying to decide what life was going to look like now, I had to come to terms with the fact that I didn't have time for anything else. And I had to call some clients and say, you know what, um, we're going to put things on hold for a month and I'll be back next month. And then I realized my stress levels were through the roof because I was 24 seven on the clock looking after my dad, who had prior to that been my rock, the, the sort of, you know, stability point in my life. And I got to a point where I finally realized if I didn't do something to take care of myself, this wasn't going to, I wasn't going to make the month. And I was already having health issues of my own. And so I ended up um, getting up in the morning before anyone else in the house was awake going out and having a nice long walk there. I was fortunate. There was a walking path near where my brother lived. And along the way, I would do some walking lunges and some squats. And if I found a park bench, I would do some bench dips and other things just to keep myself moving and exercising. And that was a great way to release some of the stress. I I'd stop at a, a local coffee shop and, and treat myself to a coffee as kind of my reward for getting out and doing that. Some days that whole process was five or 10 minutes long. And some days it was 40, five minutes long, depending on the time and energy I had available to me. But I knew that if I didn't look after myself, I would have nothing left in my cup, as it were, to give to my dad and the other people who needed me there to be on it and dealing with all of the things. And yeah, um, taking care of aging parents is just such a, a difficult thing to do. So I was able to do that and I was able to maintain some strength and not feel like I was completely depleted by the time I got back. One of the things that we have to think about when we're looking to balance self-care with all of the competing demands is is taking a trying to reframe. Like a lot of times we ruminate, we become embedded in this victimhood of I'm too busy, there's too much going on, everyone needs me, everyone's making all these demands of me, we do have the ability to say no. We just don't use it because we have some level of guilt that, oh no, if I say no to them, I'm letting them down. But that's not, that's not remotely true. It's okay to put up those boundaries. That's another form of self-care and say, here's the limit. This is what I'm willing to do. And this is what I'm not willing to do. And this is where I'm going to live during this particular period of my life. And one of my clients who was really struggling with this, uh, a second marriage, two young kids, and very, very busy professional career. She's got a, a high level position. And so lots of demands on her time was still expected to come home and do all the shopping and the cooking and taking care of the kids and, 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 you know, when the guys go out for, for, to play golf or go fishing or whatever it is that guys do, we don't think anything of it, but for us to take time to go out and do those things for ourselves, 
we have to get like, it's a special thing. It's a big deal. Right. And so, so she got to the point where we were working together and she was starting to work out regularly. She was feeling better. She was changing the way she ate. She stopped, like she got away from by, by changing her approach, she got away from stress eating at night, sitting and watching TV, like numbing out with chips and, and wine in front of the TV, because that was the only time that she had to spend with her husband. And at one point, she, she and I had a call and she said, you know what, I'm done. Why should I have to do everything? We all live in the house together. It's not my job alone. And it caused a bit of a rift in her family, but over time they talked through it. They worked it out. She asked for the support that she needed so that she could have 30 minutes a day to do some kind of exercise and decompression and taking care of herself. And now she said, when mom goes upstairs, everybody knows that's her time and, and not to interrupt unless it's really important or urgent. And she said, and now I don't do everything in the house. I ask for help. I expect that other people are going to contribute. She said, because, you know, when you're doing it all and you're trying to do it all and you end up feeling like crap and you can't get any, have any fun in your life, who wants to live like that? On what planet is that acceptable? And I said, you know, well done because it, it takes work. I'm not going to say it's easy to make it happen, but you can get there by exercising what I call your no muscles, your NO muscles. If you start learning how to say no to simple things, to small things, do it when it feels easy and practice. And once you exercise those no muscles, you'll learn how to set those boundaries. Think about where you feel maybe even resentful or where you feel a little bit violated by the demands that people are at, are putting on your time or the giving, the excess giving that you are choosing to give. And when you can identify that limit, that's where you can decide how to set those boundaries and start practicing working out your no muscle. Step away. Try becoming a witness to the thoughts that are going on in your head. It's important to, to step away because a lot of times we get caught up, as I said before, in this victimhood and the emotion of the situation. And we all know when we're in the middle of an emotional situation, stepping back and being objective is probably not going to happen. And you can see it when other people are going through something like that and be the voice of reason. And it's hard to do that for yourself. So that, again, is where having a really good social support, having good family support, being able to ask for the things that you need, or being able to say, right now is not a good time for this. I'm feeling too emotional to deal with it rationally. Please, can we deal with this later, if that's a possibility? And if not, you know, it's it's a good time to also get some external support. And again, this is where coaching can come into play because you can live through some of these scenarios with your coach and you can find better ways to deal with them that are more supportive of your needs. So when we, when we come back, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, I want to talk about motivation because a lot of times people say, well, I'd love to do all this self-care stuff, but some days I just don't feel motivated to do it. And I'm here to tell you, motivation is a lie. And I will tell you why after the break. But just to recap, when you have multiple competing priorities or demands on your time, it's, it's time to take a step back and ask, are these things contributing to my joy? Are these things contributing to my well-being? Are these things contributing positively to my life? And then start deciding where you can set those boundaries. It's 100% okay to ask for the help and support you need so that it's easier to manage some of these demands on your time, many of which are self-imposed, but many of which are also very unrealistic. There are only so many hours in the day, and there's only so much of you to go around if you're not exercising good self care. So we're going to come back after a short break. I'm Julie Medesi, your host here on For the Health of It. We're on the Inspired Choices Network, and we will wrap this up when we come back. Do you know that health and vitality are your body's natural state of being? Is that what your life feels like? Or do you feel like that's more of a pipe dream than an achievable goal? 
If you're a woman over 40 experiencing those not-so-fun changes to your body or lacking energy and worrying about the side effects of aging, wishing you could fit back into your clothes, it is time for you to learn how to change it all. When you tune into For the Health of It with Master Health Coach Julie Medesi, you'll learn how to regain your sense of badassery so you can navigate midlife like a boss. Listen to For the Health of It with Julie Medesi Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 Central Time, 8 Mountain Time, and 7 Pacific Time, and 4 p.m. in Italy on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is For the Health of It with Julie Medesi. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to julie at evexiahealth.com. That's J-U-L-I at E-V-E-X-I-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com. And now back to the program. Welcome back to For the Health of It. I'm your host, Julie Medesi. We're here on the Inspired Choices Network. And I would love to help you through this journey of yours, through menopause, perimenopause, postmenopause, and your self-care because it's such a critical factor of your overall well-being. And um, I shared a few stories earlier in the show about how this can play out when times are really stressful. We all have competing demands, and sometimes it's a matter of breaking things down into smaller and smaller and smaller steps until it becomes something you feel like you it would be silly to not do it. And I'll and I'll give you an example because we talked about motivation. Motivation is a lie. People say, I need to be motivated. I can't stay motivated. How can I keep my motivation levels up? Motivation is a limited resource and motivation actually follows action, not the other way around. So if you're waiting to be motivated, you may be waiting for a long time. You may get fleeting moments of inspiration that, that come in and inspire you to take movement and, and take action forward, but that's not the same thing as motivation. When we feel successful, when we actually take action and experience some little successes and we get that dopamine hit in our brain, then we feel motivated to continue doing it because it feels good. So motivation actually comes after you've taken action. So if you wait for motivation, stop waiting for motivation. And I'll tell you, a good example, I had a client who said, I want to go walking more often. I don't know why I don't walk. It would be so easy to just put my shoes on and head out the door. And I said, okay, well, what's stopping you? Oh, I just don't feel like it. Okay, so what if you did feel like it? Well, how could you feel like it? How could you make it easy? So we started by putting her walking shoes next to the front door. And just doing that, that was one action step that she took. And as long as she put those shoes in front of the door every day, action was done. And after a couple of days of that, I said, okay, now put your shoes on. Don't have to do anything else. If you want to do something else after that, that's fine. But once you put your shoes on, your task is done for the day. Well, that feels silly, right? If I'm going to put my shoes on, I might as well do something. Cool. If you want to do it, do it. If you put your shoes on and you say, nah, then don't do it, but you've taken action and then give yourself a fist pump or, you know, just do something, clap your hands, dance around a little bit. I did my task today. And then the next step was put the shoes by the door, put them on and then step outside the front door. You see where I'm going with this. And by the time we got to that point, it was like, oh, this is silly. I'm just going for the damn walk. But we built up the habit of getting ready, of taking an action step. And pretty soon it was a natural thing to just put those shoes on and head out the front door. And you can break down any of those healthy habits like that, whether it's 
healthy food, whether it's movement, whether it's sleep and um, rest and recovery. And there are ways to do that. And these are the things I walk my clients through because a lot of times it feels overwhelming. I have all these things to do and now I have this other thing to add to my life. You don't have to do it all at once. You can do it a little bit at a time. You don't wait for motivation. You create motivation by taking action and experiencing success and celebrating every little tiny step you take because you know you can move a couple of grains of sand on the beach and you have changed the beach forever even though it feels like this tiny little minor thing i had a um a client who was really struggling with this her sense of self-worth her sense of motivation her sense of how, where am i going to fit self-care into my life and we worked again through this six month program and over time not only did she end up losing weight, starting to feel good about exercise, but she started to take care of herself and got to the point where she said, you know what, I want to take a trip by myself. And she did. She'd never done that before in her entire life. And she did because finally she learned that she mattered and she took care of herself because she mattered. And when you take this step by step, when you think about ways that you can break it down and break it down, and it can be a tiny little thing, drink a glass of water, practice a five minute habit, take some, take some deep breaths. That can be your self care for the day. We build on those successes. This is, this has been, you know, really one of my favorite topics and shows. And I would, I would like to, to end by reading a uh, a couple of things that I that I think will resonate. It certainly resonated with me, um, and this is paraphrased from um, analogy and analogy by someone called Jojo Bennington. A friend of mine posted it on Facebook the other day. You're holding a cup of coffee when someone comes along and bumps into you or shakes your arm, making you spill the coffee everywhere. Why did you spill the coffee? Because someone bumped into you? Nope. You spilled the coffee because there was coffee in your cup. If there had been tea in the cup, you would have spilled tea. Whatever is inside the cup is what spills out. Therefore, when life comes along and shakes you, which will happen, whatever is inside you will come out. And it's really easy to fake it until you get rattled. So it's time to ask yourself an important question. What's in my cup? When life gets tough, what spills over? Is it joy, gratitude, peace, and humility? Anger, bitterness, harsh words and reaction, self-deprecation. Life provides the cup. You choose how to fill it. So today, let's work towards filling our cups with gratitude, forgiveness, joy, words of affirmation, and kindness, gentleness, and love for others. I love that analogy because it's so true. It exactly summarizes what I've been trying to say to you today. And if you take away nothing else, think about what you're putting in your cup. And then I have one more quote that I actually have on my desktop because I love the book, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. She's so good and it's such a great book. A little sweary if you don't like swearing and don't read it, but she's really funny. And it says, you are a badass. You were one when you came screaming onto this planet and you are one now. The universe wouldn't have bothered with you otherwise. You can't screw up so majorly that your badassery disappears. It is who you are. It is who you always will be. It's not up for negotiation. So it's time to lift up that badass, dust her off, and give her the self-care and the affirmation she needs. And if you need help finding your badassery, I'm here for you. Let's get in touch. Send me an email. Head to my website at avexiahealth.com. Um, I offer a complimentary coaching session to get you on your way. This isn't a sales session. This is about talking to you what steps you can take. Let's, let's put a strategy in place. Let's put those steps into action so you can start feeling motivated to do all of the things that's going to bring out that badassery, fill your cup and spill kindness and goodness out into the world because the world needs the best part of you that you have to give. And the only way you're going to get it is by practicing self-care. I'm Julie Medesi, your host here on The Health of It. And even through menopause, I want you to remember you can build a body you love living in one small step at a time. Thanks for joining me today. 
Thank you for listening to For the Health of It with Julie Medesi, Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 Central Time, 8 Mountain Time, and 7 Pacific Time at 4 p.m. in Italy on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, remember, you can build a body you love living in, one small step at a time.